Let me check my clicker's working. Brilliant, right. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk to you today about uh, how we have uh, moved to using a block-based editor in WordPress before Gutenberg was a thing. Um, and there's been a little bit as well about how we're going to uh, try and move that towards using Gutenberg as well. Uh, obviously, because it's very, very imminent. Has um, anybody not heard of Gutenberg before we start? Good. Hope you have. <laughs> it's quite a hot topic. So, uh, my name is Mark. I am a founder of a, a WordPress agency called High Rise Digital, um, and I'm at WP Mark on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, that would be lovely. So, first of all, this talk is going to talk about an alternative approach. This is not to say that we don't like Gutenberg. It has issues, yes, but it's not something that we're saying don't use. It just wasn't right for us when we started this journey. So we ended up going in a different direction. Um, but that's what this talk's going to be about. We will use Gutenberg, definitely, but it just wasn't right at the point in our journey when we decided we needed to uh, allow our clients to use a block-based editor um, or an editor that allowed you to add blocks. Well. <coughs> so just a little bit of a caveat. Um, I don't want you to think that we're anti-Gutenberg. So how did this uh, all come about in our journey? Well, we've noticed over the last few years that designs have changed, as they would. And we get designs. We're not actually design agencies. We don't do much design ourselves at all. We, our ideal client is get a design and build this in WordPress. And the designs we received changed a lot over the last sort of five or six years. And the designs we're receiving now are becoming more and more challenging to enable customers to be able to keep editing the, the content of their website. And more to the point, make that easy and intuitive so you don't have to edit things in 14 different places to make it work. Um, and because of designs have changed, things have got a little bit more tricky. And it led us to this approach, thinking, how can we make this easier? How can we actually help the clients to make the editing experience a lot easier? So let's have a look oops, at a typical sort of design that we might have received three or four years ago. We probably wouldn't have received this one, because it's the Facebook News uh, blog, blog site. Uh, I think it's actually on WordPress.com. Um, and this is kind of your traditional design that most websites kind of look like. Um, in, in, in back in the day, not that long ago actually. Um, and as you can see, it's got a header. So the header uh, is usually where you know, the, the logo goes. It usually have a menu in there, um, possibly some, some sharing stuff maybe. Um, but most sites had some sort of a header with a menu in it, and that's what they look like. Most sites had this block of content um, where you could put images, you could put links, but usually it was just a, a block of text lists and things like that. It was the main body of the article. And in this case, it's no different. It's got a heading, it's got a published date, etc. Often they had a sidebar. It doesn't have to be on the right, it doesn't have to be on the left. Sometimes it doesn't actually have to be at the side. But they'd have this idea or concept of a sidebar that displays on the site. In this case, it's got like the latest categories, so you can click and view news from particular categories. Um, it could have a, a list of uh, authors in it. You name it, there's lots of, of examples. But essentially, it has a sidebar somewhere on the page. Um, and then at the bottom, we've got the footer. So uh, this usually has often a menu again, and some sort of copyright information, that sort of stuff. So that's what an old design kind of looked like. This is a more modern design that we've been working on recently. Uh, and these are the designs that we received from the, from the, the designer. So can we build these in WordPress? And as you can see, some of those concepts have disappeared. So we do have some sort of a header up here. Um, it changes on every page. So, so this hero section at the top, and we've got different images coming in. Some have a different layout, some have a video behind them, etc. We've still got a menu, we've still got the logo idea, so that's all kind of the same. And then we've got a footer, which you, you can probably say is, is similar. Um, this has got some sort of uh, menus and sort of columns, and some themes have that in sort of widgetized footer areas where you can drop a widget in and, 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 and it displays it in a column, column view. But this bit in the middle is where it changes. This is actually a snippet of this design. It's been, there's more of these down the page. I've cut it up so you can see it on the slide. Um, but we've got these sort of sections going across the page um, with an image and some text and a call to action button, etc. This is another page from the same design. Uh, this has got some videos, it's got some uh, a post grid at the bottom here. Obviously these would be like featured images when they get actually displayed out on the site. Um, so this is another page. 
So, whoops. So these pages are kind of built up of blocks, blocks of content. You can see them across the page. I've highlighted one in green and one in red. Um, I suppose this is what Gutenberg is trying to solve, in that we can build pages of these blocks uh, and output these blocks on the site. And here's the other page. You can say there's three blocks here. We've got one at the top. This is the same type of block. Obviously, it's just reversed where the image goes on the right rather than the left. And then we've got a content grid uh, at the bottom again. So those are the sort of uh, blocks of the page. So, what is the problem with that with, uh, with WordPress? Excuse me. So, if we go back to the old design, or the older design, um, we had things in WordPress that we could use to build this design. So, at the, at the head of there, we've got a beautiful menu system in WordPress that allows us to build lovely menus, they can be nested. Uh, we can assign them to different locations within the theme. We can add custom links to them. We can do all sorts with them. There's even plugins where you can turn them into mega menus and do all sorts of things. So we've got a really good menu system. Brilliant. We've got somewhere in the WordPress admin to edit that. This content block on the left, we've got a WYSIWYG editor. It does exactly that. It allows us to put images in. It allows us to put text in, links, videos with embeds, all that sort of stuff. It really works quite well. Sidebars, we've got widgetized areas in WordPress that can do that. Um, these are just the default widgets, like categories that lists all your categories. And similarly with the footer, uh, footer uh, we can use widgets and menus and things to make, make that content editable. So WordPress worked really well for this design because it gave us, gave us the tools in the back end to allow clients to edit that content quite easily. Excuse me. But how do we do this sort of layout? It becomes a bit more difficult. How do we allow someone to do that, this image left or right, buttons, titles, how do we allow to do that in this editor? Um, it's not very easy, um, and people have tried and tried and tried to make it work. Um, some successfully, some not so successfully. But we just don't have the options in here. It's brilliant for that first design, it does exactly what it says. It's, gets your text in there, you can put images, etc. But you can't really do those dynamic sort of layouts which have got more design scope on them, should we say. So, many have tried, as I've said. So let's have a look at some of the attempted solutions that people have uh, tried to make it work. Oops. So the first one is uh, the good old short code. So I'm sure you've all seen short codes. They're working like this, so they're not as big as that in the editor, but yeah, just to put through the point. But, uh, they're in square brackets, and there's usually a string of text in square brackets. Uh, and what happens is when you save your post and you view that on the front end of the post, that gets replaced with some dynamic uh, content. So a popular one might be that you'd have one that says like uh, tweets, and then you'd like tweets equals like four, username equals WP Mark, and it would show four tweets from the, the username of WP Mark. Um, that's, that's kind of a, 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 an option that's been used quite a lot to try and get those dynamic layouts in there. But they're just not very good. I mean, you, you, you're writing something, you need to know exactly how to write it. You, you don't have any visuals to see what you're writing. Um, you know, how many parameters does this thing take? There's nothing on the screen to tell me that it's even available that I can add this to the page. If you know about it, that's great. If you don't, you don't. Some plugins add buttons where it says add media. So you can click a button and then it'll drop this code into the page for you, um, which is good, it's better, but it's not perfect. It's been tried to be solved, so I don't know if anyone's ever used this plugin called Shortcake, and it's, um, it tries to provide a user interface for shortcodes, so it allows a bit more of a, a, a GUI interface so that users can add shortcodes without having to type things in. Um, and it's quite good, actually. It, um, it gives you a screen like this, so next to the Add Media button, there's a button that says, I think it's Add Post Element. You click on that and then it pops up and then any short codes that are available that have been registered with this plugin, it puts a button on the screen and says which one do you want to add. So this is a, like a quote short code that gives you like a little quote or testimonial. So you click on the button, say yeah, I want to add a testimonial, and then you get this screen and you just get boxes to enter information in. Um, uh, so this is where the quote itself, what you want the quote to, to be, and then you've got the source of the quote at the bottom there. And then I think somewhere it's just not on this, this button, there's a, a button down the bottom that says like add to post, and then what that does is it drops the actual short code itself, that string of text, into the editor rather than you having to type it all out. 
Um, the great thing about this as well is it tries to preview what that will look like on the front end in the editor, so you can actually see what you're going to get on the, on, the, on the front end as well. It's not perfect at doing that job, but it's not bad, it's not bad. Um, I've used this, this plugin to do things like uh, before and after photos in the editor so that you can see them, it works quite well. So that's something that's been tried, short codes. The, the, they're very good, but they're not perfect, and they need, uh, they're need not very intuitive for users that don't know exactly what they are. If you've never seen them before, then you know why am I typing this string of text, and then on the front end it's turning into this, this other thing. Page builders. <coughs> There's lots of them now, lots of them. Um, these are just a few, so we've got uh, Visual Composer, there's Divi, there's uh, Elementor, and all that down the bottom there. But um, there's quite a few of them out there, page builders, and they've tried to solve this problem of allowing clients to build up the layout of their pages of different components. So, you know, I want to have another row, I want an image here, I want some text here, I want to put a button underneath, and to do that sort of layout that we've been providing. Um, a lot of them are very good. Um, but a lot of them aren't, and a lot of them, they all save their data in a different way. Uh, there's no sort of uh, common way that that happens. And moving between one page builder and another page builder can often be very difficult. Um, but they are getting better and better and better all the time, which has got to be good. Now, we've tried some of these as, as an agency. We've looked at some of these and tried some out. But they have some fundamental problems that we just couldn't get past. Um, the main one is that they just provide too many options for the clients. There's just too many things that they can control. They can control the margins and the padding on everything. They can control the colours on everything. And actually, that's not what we want to allow the clients to do. They should be responsible for editing, adding their content, and the site should do the rest, essentially. Um, because otherwise, they just become the designer. What's the point in paying for a beautiful design? when you can just break it in two seconds flat by changing some values that you don't, you shouldn't be able to, to change. So it comes very hard to create a website that sticks to the website's design principles, the brand guidelines, because people just want to experiment too much. Um, and most of these page builders uh, have that out of the box. Some are better than others, some you can turn things on and off and, and give control, but they're not, um, they, they just give too many options for our liking. And I suppose that brings on to the latest solution, which is the Gutenberg project itself, um, which is going to be launched extremely soon. Is it the 27th of November or something like that? Soon? Has it today? It should have worked, yeah, it has yeah. it today. But we'll see. We'll see when it comes. It's certainly not going to be long, I don't think, anymore. That It's going to be probably imminently. If it's not just before Christmas, it'll probably just after Christmas. Um, but it's coming, coming very shortly. Um, I'm sure that everyone's got mixed opinions of what Gutenberg's like. Um, I've used it, uh, parts of it I think are really good, parts of it I think are not so good, parts of it I think are really good for developing, parts of it I think are not really good for developing. Um, but it's, it's, it's coming, it's going to stay, and I'm sure that it will be a success in time, um, which, is, which is good for us all. But as an agency, it had some problems to start with that meant we really couldn't use it. So, 12 months ago when we started on, well probably 18 months ago when we started on this journey of trying to create, uh, allow uh, clients to collect these, create these block based sites. Um, it wasn't really ready, it had been started, it was out there, you could have a play with it, but it was just too much in its infancy. It's written in a completely different language than I know, so it's all written in JavaScript. Um, I, I do use JavaScript, but it's not really what I do, um, so I'd have to learn all that uh, and, and, and react to things, which was difficult. And it suffers some of the problems that the page builders suffer. You've got lots of options for things, so I don't know if you've used it, but if you had a paragraph, you can change the background colour, you can set a drop cap on it, you can change the font size, and yes, I'm sure you can take those things away from it, but again, as a, as a developer who doesn't know JavaScript very well, that was really difficult for me. So we made the decision early on that at this point in time we couldn't go forward with using Gutenberg and we needed to look for something else to try and help our clients uh, make these sort of uh, sites easy to manage. So that, that brings us on to our, our solution, the solution we found uh, to try and make this work. And it's a very common solution that probably most of you have seen. Uh, if you've not used it yourself. So, 
we did not use the plugin called Advanced Custom Fields, then this is a plugin that allows, um, relatively straightforward actually, users to create different admin screens to allow users to enter data that can get output on the front end in a much more straightforward uh, fashion. So for example, if you've got a post that is about a person and it's displaying like a profile information, you could quite easily create an edit screen where they just have a box to put their name in, they have a box to put their job title in, their company, their email address, their contact details, a short bio, and the back end screen is really easy to create and it's nice and uh, easy for the uh, users to understand uh, how to do that. But there's one particular feature of Advanced Custom Fields that we took advantage of uh, in the Pro version, which is actually a paid for version, it's not very much, I think it's about $25 for a license, and it's called the Flexible Content Field. Now this field actually allows us to build these uh, block-based systems that Gutenberg's trying to do. And you can kind of get an idea from what it's doing with this little screenshot here. So, uh, on sites that use this, uh, clients, when they want to add some content, they basically click this button. You can change the label on this button, by the way, it doesn't have to say add row. So I think ours says add content or add block or something like that. And then you get a choice of which uh, types of content that you want to add. And these we all create using this plugin. So I think the one in the example that you saw in the designs where we've got the image, the text and the button, we call that like a feature row. So, we, so when the client wants to add one, they click add content and it would say feature row, they click that and then they get a screen that appears on, the, on the, uh, some uh, fields that appear on their screen, like a form, with all the right fields to add that content in for that particular type. So the flexible content field allows us to create these different blocks and allow the user to choose which ones they want to add to a page at a certain point in time. So this is an example of what the back end could look like for uh, a, a, a series of blocks. So each of these uh, blocks with the dark coloured headings is uh, a flexible content field. It's a block of, of, in Gutenberg's sense as such. And as you can see from the little uh, animated GIF, you can drag them up and down, you can reorder them just like you can in Gutenberg, uh, and you can have the different content in. So it brings an element of layout building, or I suppose page building, to WordPress. And, and we think this is a nice, easy to use user interface for clients to be able to manage their content. Uh, so you can see we've got the add block button here, so what we've, what we've labelled it. And we used this for a few months. And we got to the point where we we're thinking, we're just doing the same thing here over again. Each client wants the same sort of blocks. So this is ridiculous. We're writing the same pieces of code for this client, for this client, and for this client. So what we needed to do was to standardise this and to try and make it so that it was more portable from one project to the next. It would save us time, it would save therefore the clients money because we didn't have to keep redoing things. And that uh, was something we did when we built this plugin called HD ACF Blocks. Um, so this is something that we now use on most of our sites. So we didn't want to have to do this every time. We thought what we'll do is we'll build a plugin and we can add this to the sites that, that require this sort of layout. So it works alongside advanced custom fields. Obviously you need that installed and activated for it to work properly or for it to work at all. Um, and the idea here was that we'd have a suite of blocks to be able to use on any client site. So if client text comes along and says, well, I want to have this sort of block, we might already have one that almost fits the bill, in which case we could use that and, and, and change it slightly. Or it might be that we had a new one and then we could make that available to everyone else or we could uh, have that available in our suite to use on other projects in the future. But what was really important was trying to save time, trying to make the code base that we used all the time more consistent so that we uh, were being a bit more efficient in our development. So the actual blocks plugin at the moment has, um, I think these are all of the blocks we have, they might be, I might have missed some off. Uh, so we've got a, a block that allows you to add a, a form that uses gravity form, so you need that active obviously. Uh, we've got one called like, recent content, which means you can display like the latest five posts from the post type, uh, or you could display posts, five, ten posts from this category, and so on. Uh, feature row you've seen, uh, documents, so you can have like a list of PDF documents, often clients want to do that, or a list of Word documents, or whatever you want to add. Accordion, good for FAQs, things like that. A pricing block that allows us to do like a pricing table of different um, features or, or products, if you like. Um, a content block, probably really badly named, but essentially that's just like a WYSIWYG box that you can use like the normal content. 
um, a hero uh, box uh, or, or block, so that allows you to either add one hero section, and that could be like an image with some uh, a description over the top and title, uh, and that's a repeating block as well, so you can add more than one hero and it'll turn it into like a slider. All the way up into slider and on and there you go. And then we've got other ones, you can see them on there, so um, like I said, some of them have repeating blocks inside them, so um, is there a call to action on there? Yes, so call to action, you can either have one or you can have more than one. Uh, and it, that the front end will sort of behave appropriately as it does that. Um, <clears throat> so this is an example of one of our blocks. So you, this is the content block, nice and simple one to show you. Um, each block has um, some like what we call default fields. So we can we can turn them off, on and off, for each block we want to do. And our default fields are essentially a block title, because most most blocks on the page want some sort of title output to somewhere. Um, and a block introduction. This one doesn't have the introduction, which is just like a paragraph of a, a, a text input that you can add some stuff to, um, because obviously it is a WYSIWYG itself, so you can just put that in there. Um, and they all have this option at the bottom for a custom class. Um, this one is, a, as I said, it's a content block, and you can see you can add another column if you want to here. So what this does is just repeats this further down the page, and on the front end we can turn that into a column-based uh, layout. Uh, and we can set a maximum number of columns that they want to allow as well. So we can say you're only allowed to have three columns, or four columns, or two columns, or one column if you want. And then that would be, would be uh, greyed out so we can't click it. And then each block also has some um, an options tab. So we split it into a content and an options. Content, maybe they could be better labeled than that. But essentially that's the stuff that get, you get seen on the front end. Options are the things that they can sort of change for this particular block. So most blocks, and again we can turn these on and off on a per client basis using our plugin. So most blocks allow them to have a background colour, so they can set a background for the whole block across the page. They could use a background image, um, and then we, add, we added this option on the right hand side, so if they choose um, a dark colour obviously, we can't have dark text on a dark colour, so we need to build a way of inverting that text. Um, and there are, there are sort of PHP libraries you can use to detect what colour it is on the back end and, and then do that, but we found this was a good way of doing it. Tick a box, and then it'll it'll add a class to the to the block. We can then use to sort of do something and maybe change the colour of it. And each block has the option for a custom class. So, if you want to do something a bit different with the block, you can put a custom class in there, and then maybe use the customizer to, to create a bit of CSS and output that block in a bit of a different way. So that's how uh, that bit works. And like I said, all these can be turned on and off on a per client basis. So it was really important when we started developing this that we wanted to develop it in an extensible way. If you're not sure what that means, it's essentially a code base that we can keep the same, but we can change things on a per client basis without changing the code base of our plugin. So that always stays the same, it's nice and stable. Um, and it means we can, we can update that code base and it's not going to break any sites that that's gone on to. So the way in which we make it extensible is we have lots of what we call template overrides. So each of the blocks that you see on the screen, uh, the plugin includes the front-end markup for that. So, uh, and that is included in the plugin. So, but what we've made, allowed it to do is that if you include the same file in your theme, it will use that one instead. Just like WooCommerce uses, if you've ever used that, you can override its templates by placing them into your theme. Um, and that allows us to then change the markup for a specific client. Uh, if, if, that's, if that's needed for the design that we're achieving with them. So again, we're not, we're not breaking the plugin, we're just uh, using the same file, put it in your theme, and you can make some changes to it. All of the fields that make up all of the blocks are all filterable, so they're essentially in a huge array in PHP, and as a developer I can take them out of there and I can push new fields into there. So if a client uh, wants to have the call to action uh, block, which has got like a, a title, an image, description, and a button. If they want to add a second button in, I can do that quite easily. Either in the plugin or in the theme functions file, I can easily add a field into there. And then we could use the template overrides to put the template into the theme and actually output that extra field. So it's nice and extensible. Um, there's lots of actions and filters, so each of the templates allows us to put content before and after the different places. We've got uh, classes that are all filterable, so that we can add cl extra classes to things if we want to, to do them to style and things like that. And based on classes, there's lots of helper classes. So where we've got uh, a call to action block, it will, the class will be outputted with how many there are. Um, so is it the one, is the five, is the two? So we can use that to style things in different, uh, different layouts. 
Um, and there's uh, classes such as if they've added a background colour, a class gets added that like, has background colour, if there's a, a background image, and a class gets added that has, has, has background image. So we can use those classes to style the different blocks based on the options that the client has chosen in the back end. So it was really important that we built it extensively. It isn't perfect. By no means is it perfect. And we did face some challenges when we were building this. Uh, and I want to just cover a few of those uh, quickly now. So the first one was the actual back-end interface. It, it isn't perfect. This is um, advanced custom fields, flexible content, without us doing anything to it. And this is with all the fields collapsed, so you can you click on these to expand them and it'll show you the, the fields inside them. But it, it's not very easy to see where your content is on the front end. So obviously this is the content, like which paragraph on the front end is inside that block, it looks at the top, so it's probably going to be the first. It's not that easy to see where your content is. Um, so we tried to make some improvements to that. Um, it is a lot better than this, <laughs> which is a site we actually got an inquiry about and they were saying, um, we need some help, we can't edit our content. Um, well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, I think that's Visual Composer, I think. Um, but yeah, where is the content? It's somewhere in there. Anyway, it's better than that. So what did we do to try and improve this? Um, we styled the headings so they were dark, uh, and we found that really helped to uh, visually see the differences in the, the different fields. Uh, it just stood out from the rest of the admin a little bit. Um, you'll notice we also added an additional title on them. So we've got um, content, which is the block name, and then the block title called Welcome is what we've put next to it. So you can see which section you're in on the page from the front end. That's a bit nicer as well. Um, <coughs> heroes are usually used first, so we did bother with those. That's why it's always obvious where they are. Um, that's probably not the best screen chart, actually, because you'd be better to see them on that's a bit bigger more often. Um, but it just, just meant we could, uh, we could make it look a bit nicer. And it's easy to find the different sections. Other things that are a problem is that, obviously, Advanced Custom Fields saves everything as post-meta. It's not saved into the content of your post in the database. So as far as... Um, you know, the world is concerned. <laughs> There's no content for all your posts. It doesn't have any. Uh, it's all in metadata. Why is that a problem? Well, it's not searchable by default in WordPress. WordPress doesn't search metadata by default. There are solutions for that. There are plugins that help you do that. But this is not perfect because it's not searchable. Other problems with that is that if you use Yoast SEO, and let's face it, probably everyone in the room does, um, Yoast can't analyse your content on the page because it isn't in the content of the post and that's what Yoast tries to do. It tries to look at the content uh, that you've written in that WYSIWYG editor and, and, and analyse it and it can't do that. And again, someone I think released a plugin that would help you do that. We've tried it, it's a bit flaky. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. Um, and the last one is reusable blocks. Gutenberg does this very, very well. Uh, if, you've, if you've ever used Gutenberg, you can save a block and then you can use it in multiple places. That's really good. And if you change the block once, it changes it everywhere. Um, so that's quite nice. And clients did want that feature. We've actually built that into our plugin now and it works really well. Um, we've been trying it with the, the design that you just saw before, um, which was good. Um, and it's working so far so good. So they can create a block and then they can use it in all the other places on the website and then if you change it in the place where they created it, it'll change everywhere. So that's been, that's been good. Um, but I wouldn't say it's been fully tested yet, but it is working. And then, um, this kind of brings me on to the future, and the next part of our journey with, with this plugin is that, um, again, I'm not a JavaScript developer, so I can't sort of uh, jump that barrier of being able to develop Gutenberg blocks and on. Uh, and the great team at ACF have built tools into advanced custom fields that allows you to pretty much create fields than, than you used to in ACF and make them available as a block in Gutenberg. Um, and this is something that I was actually looking at on the train coming up uh, yesterday. And it's actually really good. Um, you don't need to know any JavaScript. You can uh, write a bit of PHP, not a lot, um, and it will create uh, your block as a Gutenberg block. Um, which then has the benefits of being in the post content and, and that sort of stuff. So this is something that's coming soon. Uh, it's still in beta actually at the moment in the Advanced Custom Fields uh, plugin. Um, I think they're up to beta 2 now with this, so obviously it's getting iterated on as, as we come. Whether they'll launch as WordPress launches and make this available, I don't know, but it will obviously be out soon. There is a blog post on there if you want to read it. I think there's a couple of marks as there's been an update to that one uh, with some new, new developments in it. So that's going to be our next project. 
um, it's going to be converting our plugin that we have now so that it will work in Gutenberg as well. Um, the, the best thing would be to try and use the same plugin we've got and, and make all the blocks available in both. I, as I said, I had a quick play with that and I'm not sure we're going to be able to do it. Uh, I won't go into the technical reasons why, but certainly we're going to look at building another uh, different one that uses Gutenberg and then we can have two alternatives for clients to use whether they want to use the Gutenberg editor or they want to stick with the old system for now, uh, then it's up to them. Um, and that's, that's kind of me. So as I said, uh, I'm Mark, I'm a WordPress developer. I tend to do more back-end development than, than front-end at all. Um, if you want to follow me, I am at WP Mark on Twitter. Um, and just a little plug at the end, we are currently trying to hire a WordPress developer, so if you're interested in a remote role, then uh, come, out, come out with me. Word with me. Or visit at Europe. Thank you. enjoyed that there's going to be more from Mark tomorrow at 115 after lunch in here in our Gutenberg panel who's doing anything with Gutenberg right now is anybody making anything mm -hmm. well yeah you're allowed okay that can come to you can you tell us about it I can tomorrow you can tomorrow okay. <laughs> <laughs> so who's got questions for Mark Jerry the, the ACF uh, blocks plugin does it work with ACF Pro only it does because ACF Pro, uh, you have to have ACF Pro to have the flexible flex content. <coughs> the free version doesn't have that field available yet. Yeah. Um, but I think, uh, if we're just going back to that slide, I'm pretty sure that's going to be in the free version, I think. So you might be able to build them in, in Gutenberg with the free version. But do have a look at that part. Well, this is probably a bit of a naughty question, but it's probably generic to a lot of fields of software development. Um, but so you built this essentially this extensible code base. So you've yeah. got a, a library of, of material that is configurable. Yeah. And you, you said you can but you can change that library without breaking the stuff that's written in the older version, for want of a better word. How do you how do you make sure? How do you regression test that? You make sure you don't if you update the new stuff, you, you don't break the old stuff. That made sense in my head. Yeah. Uh with difficulty is the answer. Um, so I think it depends what we do to the plugin, in, in a way. So obviously we've got all the sites we've built with it, I, I've got on my machine or I've got available to test it with. Uh, I wouldn't test it with every site I've ever done. And we'd always say to, to clients anyway, um, don't update things without testing them, <laughs> which is the, you know. Uh, but I think I would, I, I mean, I don't really automate things or anything like that that I'd test it with. I would just probably, when I'm developing something, I'd be like, that might break something if I do that, so I'm going to test it before I do it type thing. Um, so yeah, no perfect answer really. But the way in which we we sort of edit the functionality would be through, so you, you would add our plugin to the site with ACF, and then it, let's say we wanted to add some fields to one of the blocks that were extra. We Most of the sites we run, we sort of have a utility plugin, which does all the sort of side tweaks and modifications, and we just throw it in there with a function that hooks into a filter in WordPress. So that's doing the modification to the actual code base, if you like, and the plugin just sort of sits and stays the same, if you like, uh, unless obviously it gets updated for whatever reason. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Is your HD blocks plugin um, public, or you guys use it internally only? It's not, yeah. That was the first question I got asked when I last gave this talk. Uh, it's, it's internally only at the moment. Um, I don't know whether, we, we might we might release it, I don't know if it's, it's something, I don't think it would be um, paid for or anything, it would just be out there for you to, to, to use as a look at if we did, but um, it's not the moment, sorry, no, but it might be, watch this space. Anyone else? Thanks again, Mark. Thank you very much.